Hey what's going on everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be creating the shape morph transition inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is a useful technique for motion graphics is if you guys are making like product videos or anything like that. So what you guys can all morph here is shapes. You can also morph text or like let's say SVG objects. Which could be like your logo, characters, anything like that. But we're going to get into how to do all that in just a second. But before we do, make sure you guys hit the like button as well as subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a new video. And also, if you guys want the project files for this tutorial and any other tutorial that I do, there's a link down below to where you guys can get those. But anyways, let's get into the video. Alright, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve, and I'm just on a blank timeline here. So let's come to the effects library, uh, come down to effects, and grab a fusion composition. We're going to do everything in fusion, as that's going to be the easiest way to get the best looking result. Now inside of fusion, I'm just going to grab down a background, and then connect this up to our media out. And then we'll add in our shapes. So you might think, like, if you want a rectangle, uh, you just grab the rectangle node right here. Or if you want a circle, you grab the circle node. But now, uh, how you do this is taking a polygon node. And if we connect this into the background, what we want to do is get the first point exactly in the center. So let's just create it off to the side here. And come to the top uh, on the settings, and then do snap to pixel. All right, now if we grab this, as you can see, it'll be snapping uh, to like a grid. And if we uh, get this close to the center, it'll snap it into the perfect center. So 0.5 on the X and 0.5 on the Y. Once we got that, right click on it, come down to the Polygon 1 Polyline, and do Create, and then whatever shape you want. So either the ellipse or the rectangle. Now you can do other shapes, it's just, it's a different process. So I'll show you how to do that later. So I'll create a rectangle for my first one. Then we can also set the size. So I'll just do OK. Now if we zoom out, as you can see, we have a rectangle. And what we'll do is just adjust the size uh, if we want it to be larger or smaller. Alright, so now we're going to add in the next shape, and I'm going to be doing a circle for this one. So let's grab down the polygon again, and do the same steps, but this time instead of changing it to a uh, rectangle, let's change it to an ellipse. Alright, there we go. We now have our ellipse. And what we want to do is change the paint mode to add. This will prevent some issues down the line, so this is a very important step, so make sure you do this. Then after our mask nodes, let's add in a transform. And if we set the input to be uh, into the yellow one, which is the input of the transform, it will now be affected by our transform node. And we'll come to the first frame, uh, zoom out a little bit, and bring it all the way off to the side here, or wherever you guys want your uh, morph transition to start. And then we'll come to frame like 27, and we'll move it off to the side here. There we go, and now let's come up to the spline editor, drag over the transform, hit zoom to fit, and then we can select the points, hit F, and then bring the ease in up to about 80 and the ease out about to 80 as well. And now when you play this, as you can see, it slowly speeds up and then slowly speeds down. And I'm going to set my fusion out time just to about frame 32, just so we can uh, easily loop our animation like that. Next up, we're going to make it so it transitions between the rectangle and the circle. So let's come into the first one, which is going to be the rectangle. And we'll come to the frame where it's about at the center. So let's say frame... I'm going to say frame 12 is what we're going to start with. And add a keyframe on the level. And then come into the circle, bring the level all the way down, and then add a keyframe. When bringing the level of the circle down, if it does not look like this, again, verify to make sure that the paint mode is set to add, otherwise it will look like this. And then we'll come one frame after, and bring the level back up to 1. And in the square, let's also bring the level all the way down to 0. So let's go through and play this. And now we have a seamless transition between the rectangle and the circle. I'm going to come into the keyframes editor and select both of these, and then offset the uh, when it transitions by one frame. So there we go. I think that's just a little more seamless because it happens more in the middle of the screen. So this already looks pretty good, but we want to take it up a level by morphing the shape so it uh, gives a feeling of momentum and it's a smoother transition between the two. So let's come into the polygon node and go to frame about, uh, let's see... I'm going to do about frame 7 once it starts getting its uh, momentum going. And we'll come down to the bottom and add a keyframe on the shape animation. Then we'll come to the frame where it is now a circle. Alright, and we'll zoom right in and position the points and uh, move the outside points here. And you can hold down control to only adjust one of them at a time. And we'll just kind of line it up with the circle, but still giving it kind of a boxy form. 
And we'll have this last point be off to the side a little bit here. Like it is kind of just being dragged along. There we go. So let's, let's check this out. And there we go. That's looking pretty seamless, except it really jump cuts to the circle now because the circle's polygon points are not animated. So let's come to when the momentum uh, starts coming to a stop. So let's say about frame 20. I'm going to come into the polygon 2 and add a keyframe on the shape animation. Then I'm going to go to the frame that it is still a rectangle and I'm going to match the position of our uh, lines here. And there we go. So if we play this now, we have a very seamless looking transition. So let's come up to the spline editor, drag over our polygon nodes, uh, hit zoom to fit, and we'll select both of these off to the side, but turn off the level in both of them. And now we just have our shape animation keyframes. And if we select this and then hit S on the keyboard, it'll just smooth everything out, making it look a little bit better. And I think the little spot that extends out is just a little bit too far. So I'm going to come in and adjust this here just by shrinking it in a little bit. And then coming a frame forward and again shrinking it in. So now if we watch it, it should just be a little more seamless. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just drag this up, grab down a background node connect these two points up and then hitting control T to switch the input and I'll set the background to be black and then this to be let's say light blue there we go and I'm going to create a drop shadow as I really like that look so let's add in a raise node or an infinite drop shadow I should say we'll put the background into that and view the rays off to the side and let's grab this point and bring it way way up so zoom all the way out and bring this bring this like ridiculously far up into the left or whichever direction you want the shadow to be cast from. Then after the raise node, add in a bitmap, having it come in as the input. And in the bitmap, if we bring the high value all the way down, it'll create a solid line coming out of our shape. With that, we can put that into a background as the mask. There we go. And now we have a shadow that we can adjust the transparency of to adjust the intensity of the shadow. So let's just make this something that's very light. And there we go, I think that looks pretty good. So let's say you guys want to use a logo or like a, uh, a character or let's say a triangle or hexagon, a different type of shape. So how you could do that is using the polygon node and just creating it manually. So that's a little more tedious and it might not be exactly perfect. Another way to do it is using SVGs, which are scalable vector graphics. And you guys can create these using pretty much any modern photo program like Affinity Photo or Photoshop. And I'll walk you through how to do that in just a second, but you guys can also use websites like Flat Icon to get the SVG icons, and some of those are free, but you must attribute them, unless you guys want to pay the monthly payment. But let me walk you through how to create, let's say, like a hexagon inside of Affinity Photo. Now, Affinity Photo is a great alternative to Photoshop. I have a link down below to where you guys can get that, um, and I would definitely recommend it. I switched a while back, and I have been loving it. They'll also have deals going on every now and then that you guys can get it at really cheap prices. But here, let's jump into the software and I will show you how to do it. So I'm just going to create a new document. And let's say I will make this uh, 512 by 512 pixels. Alright, and then we'll just hit create down here. And now we have a transparent background, which is exactly what we want. So we'll just uh, add in a shape. And this will be the same in pretty much any photo software that has the ability to export as SVGs. So come down to the shapes and I will just come down to the polygon tool. And then I will come up all the way up to the top corner and then just drag out into the bottom corner. There we go. And now if we come up to the top, we can adjust the amount of sides that there is. So we could do a triangle or any kind of shape that we want. So let's just do this one right here. And we just want this to be filled in, uh, so just like it is right now. And once you get that done, you can just hit V and that will bring you back to the mouse tool. And as you can see, that looks good. Uh, it's a perfect shape. And what we can do is just do file and then do export. And when we, and in Infinity Photo, we have all these different export options. We'll want to select SVG. And I'm sure in most popular uh, softwares, there will be a spot that you can do SVG. I know there is one in Photoshop for sure, but this is where it is in Infinity Photo. Then we'll just do SVG for export and just leave everything at the default. Then we can hit export and select a location to put it. And then we'll jump back into DaVinci. And inside of Fusion, come up to uh, Fusion, then import, 
SVG. And then navigate to where you guys save that and import that. And when the image size comes up, make sure that is set to what your original uh, photo comp was. But let's just hit OK and it will uh, appear in the middle of your composition and it will not come in as selected. So it's kind of easy to miss, especially if it goes on top of another node and moves under it just like that. But anyways, if we view this, we now have our shape inside of DaVinci Resolve. And if we open up the group, we have a polygon node that has all of the controls inside of it. And then all you need to do with this is merge it up right before your transform node and you guys are ready to go. If you guys can't get the scaling right so it's stretching, just put your uh, photo composition at the width and height of your uh, fusion composition and that should fix the issues. But this is also the same if you guys want to do text. So if I come back into Affinity Photo, I'll just create a new composition and I'm going to do this one at 1920 by 1080 and then just hit uh, create and I'll come down to my text tool and scale this up and then just do shape okay and I'll set this to a font that I like and scale this up and then I can come back to my move tool and just center it in the composition here um, and I can also scale it up uh, there we go and now all I have to do is do file export and then do export as an SVG and do all the same steps. Except in this case, it will come in as a lot of different polygons so that can get really tedious to edit. But anyways guys, that is going to be it for this video. There's a ton of possibility with this and it is not limited to the example that I showed you in the video. Like I said, you guys can do it with text, you guys can do it with uh, different objects that you guys get and a bunch of other stuff. The possibilities are endless. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a like, as well as subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on another one of these tutorials. If you want the project files for this, they are available on my Buy Me A Coffee, so definitely go check that out at the link down below. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time for another video.